commission until Christ comes. What I believe the Great Commission is not only reaching of all the nations and then Christ will come. No, you reach all nations, but you keep doing the work among uh, those who are being born until Christ comes. So, like so yeah. Some of us, yeah. we are even excited about pulpit ministry, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah. we are not excited about yeah. children. Yeah. You deny me an opportunity to reach out to a kid? Yeah. Ah, yeah. I'll be very sad. Yeah. I'll be a very sad person. Even yeah. when I went to my the university, graduated, yes, with this bachelor's degree and everything, for me, I read children ministry. Yeah. Yeah. So I can give you my, my, my address. Okay, okay. Please. And while they're doing that, uh, we'll go around the table, do some introductions. I had you say New Zealand and so on. Tell us who you are. Oh, by the way. Okay, now that we are here in this way, yes, you um, can tell us who you are, your name. Um, Charity Mutambo. Mm -hmm. uh, I, we live in Quito. Mm -hmm. My husband is uh, one of the members of the Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. yes. So you're, you were involved in ministry outside of the country before? Uh, not really. Mm -hmm. uh, my husband had gone for his PhD studies. Okay. So we were, um, of course, as believers, to join with uh, the Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. That's where we were communicating. And so, what's your husband's name? This uh, is I do with Okay. Yeah. Amen. And so, what do you do right now? Uh, right now, I'm a home mom uh -huh. as well as a student. Okay. So, how, student where? Same college here? No, no, no. I'm a student at uh, uh, Cobham Road University. Okay. I'm doing my master's in, what? in my second year, my second and final year. So what, what are you doing it in? I'm studying business administration. So, so if I look for money, come look for you. I beg your pardon? If I need money, I come look for you. Uh, if you need your business to run well, for me, I'll be able to give you the uh, advice you all right. need. Mm -hmm. so I've been a Sunday school teacher from the time I was 15 so years old. Amen. So I've got that passion for children. I'm a Sunday school teacher of many years. But I, I, I graduated from children to adults. But kids are like I do a, a vacation Bible school and I design their stage sets and so on. Yeah. So, and a kids? Family? Yes, I am. Uh -huh. uh, the Lord subtracted our second born. Okay. So I have three. Uh, okay. Children. Uh, what's their age? Um, the youngest is six, uh -huh. turning seven in July. Okay. And then the, the, our third born is eleven now. Okay. He will be turning twelve this year. Okay. Our first born is sixteen. Okay. Turning seventeen <laughs> in May. Oh man, it's gonna be a busy year. So you. So you, what you, you, you do, just bake the cakes and put them in the freezer. <laughs> I wish it was possible to do that. If, yeah. With this not shedding, they can go bad. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you I know. baking fresh ones. Fresh ones, that's good. And then bake fresh ones. <laughs> that's, that's the best gift for them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, my young man. Uh, my name is Kirtin Tanga. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I'm a student at CCM Bible College. Mm -hmm. It's prophetic. Oh. <laughs> 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 I came back here in Copperbelt uh -huh. to be precise in Kito at the college. Mm -hmm. 
for the German students. When did you leave the copper belt? 2004. Zero. Zero. Okay. <laughs> you had said 24. Oh, <laughs> that's good. So, what inspired you to come back to college and especially a Christian college? Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a calling that is in me. Mm -hmm. I, I felt that calling in me way back before I was even what, born again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now because of, uh, due to the life I was living in, mm -hmm. that drained me to answer the call of the Lord. Well, can you briefly tell us what that life was so that I, we can avoid it? <laughs> I was like, uh, due to uh, being born in a broken family, and uh, that led me to start doing things that uh, I was like frustrated. I was thinking God is not fair to me. Why is these things happening to me and uh, my family? So I had to start now involve myself in fighting, beer drinking. I was like a person who was not so respective to other people. Uh, so in 2016, 2018, somewhere there, I, I had to meet this man who shared the gospel to me. That led me to salvation. Eventually in 2018, 2019, that's when I was baptized. As to give the testimony that I'm now truly born again. Then now, since after baptism, there was this passion, very big passion that was pushing me to go to the Bible college. So I was like, I want to go to the Bible college. Whoever I meet, I will tell him that I want to go to the Bible college. Despite me having no money, I remember when I was sharing this with my mom, she was like, show me your man, the, the money that you have, the saving that you have saved for you to go to the college. So I was like, but this is my passion, I want to go to the Bible college. Then uh, way back in, in Lusaka, I started, the, I, I started looking for a college where I can go. Then uh, mom happened to know one of the students who was at CCM. So they were like chatting. So she told him that my son wanted to go to a Bible college. And he said, OK, can I recommend him to one of the college that I went to? <coughs> that is how I found myself at CCM. And so far, how, what is your experience there? It's a nice college. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because when I, you, being in, uh, grow up in the Pentecostal, where we just have flying messages, mm -hmm. more especially. I like the way you do, I like the way you say flying messages. Yeah. Catch them if you can, yes. miss them when they do. Yes. So <laughs> when I came to this year, I realized that I was way below i don't even i can't even say i knew anything because it was new for me even to see so i was like surprised to see the college and the the lecture note that was given to me for the first time for me i thought it's going to the bible college is just to go and learn about the bible so i had been carried my own bible to say this is my bible i want to go and learn bible but when i the first i remember sitting in the first uh, in class I was given this lecture on those NHH history. So I was like, what? I was surprised to see this. And I was given an assignment that I have never done before. So I was totally lost. Yeah. It's a nice college. Mm -hmm. It has helped me to understand and where I was and where I, I am. I can tell that there is a big difference. <coughs> so I guess. Uh so now when you go back maybe to Lusaka, you encounter your old friends. Do they, what, what is it that they comment about the changes they see about you? Uh, uh, my short temper, I have a short temper. Yes, so, I so they have seen that I have changed. Even my family, they are saying. Because if they tell me uh, maybe a message that I'm not happy with, I will respond in the ash way. So when they are giving me information right like now, I will be the one who will be advising them to say this is not the way we should go about it. So they are like surprising. What is happening to you? It's, 
I can't even explain to myself it's God who is making it. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to turn to these two passionate evangelists of the gospel of the children. Yeah. And uh, just reintroduce yourself, even though I already have, but this is different because this is God's appointed encounter for two people that have a passion for ministry to children. So I'll start with you. Yes, and, uh, uh, my name is uh, Gertibai Dijan. I am from the Republic of Chad. So I have come to Zambia for Bible College just because of uh, people like you who would go on short-term mission trip. And uh, they met me in 2014, 2014 in Chad. And they offered uh, a scholarship for me to come and be trained because they saw me working, doing the ministry among the Muslims, but uh, without any training. So they thought that uh, if they train me, I would, uh, if they train me, I will be more efficient in the field than without any training. So when I came here, it is true that uh, I can see that I did not know. And I did not also realize, realize that I did not know until through the training I said, oh, uh, if I got all the actual content years back, I would have made greater impact. And uh, I'm just pleased to have met my brother here, uh, who is passionate uh, for the children ministry, uh, the same passion that I have because uh, the children are the future church the future generation of the church and we need to uh, impact uh, godliness, theology, everything pass on unto them because after some years we are going to be very tired and uh, to be with the Lord and uh, they will continue the great commission. Amen. Yeah. And, and I know your, your, your ministry, the environment that you're going back to is a little different than here in Zambia or Kenya. Can you kind of briefly give us a background because you're gonna, you, you're gonna, you deal with the Muslims that come to... Can you give us a background how you reach the kids and the parents being a, a challenging environment? Yeah, it is not easy uh, where I am doing the ministry just to approach a person and say that, uh, look, I want to share the gospel with you because they have indoctrinated them from their childhood that no, uh, Christianity is fake, uh, the Bible is fake, they have changed the Bible, so they don't believe uh, in the uh, Bible at all, and uh, they are just hostile. And uh, where I am from, it is like 93% of the population of that uh, region or province or the north part, 93 to 90, uh, 97 to 98% are Muslims. And uh, there is no way you can go door to door for door to door evangelism or one on one evangelism just as you meet someone. No. You need to build a friendship uh, that uh, can last for two, three years, and now you can start to share the gospel to your friend as a friend, a person you know, and they know you. They have seen Christ in you already, and they have heard Christ is speaking through you, through the advice and the, the ways that you live your life. Now they are convinced and they can trust you and they are willing to listen to you. Uh, even I know one friend for six years, he would come to me every day, even in the night, whatever. But I failed to share the gospel with him uh, just because he was uh, not willing to listen to the gospel. But for six years, we were best friends, always together. <coughs> now I pray that as I go back now, the first thing I will do is to share with him the gospel. Because he did not give me the chance.